Uh, before you start uh, getting into uh, this whole process of removing things, I uh, highly advise you to um, disconnect uh, this hose, just to disconnect this hose, um, so that when the engine tilts, uh, this hose is actually going to be pushing against uh, this whole assembly here, uh, potentially breaking it off of its uh, mounts. Uh, it's not going to break the unit, uh, it's just going to break off the mounts on which this thing is holding up against, so you don't want to do that. Uh, so yeah, just get that hose out of the way so it's not pushing onto the assembly. So I have um, signs of oil leak. The bottom of the transmission it's like here and I would even see a little bit of droplet forming over here and it would run all the way in the back and this whole thing would be covered in oil. Um, and the easiest way to um, identify whether it's your rear main seal or uh, or an oil pan is basically you can basically look around uh, your oil pan and if it's all dry but it's kind of wet in here and um, there are a couple of holes here you can look through this hole and then there's another hole over there if you have like an inspector tool or something of that nature you can you can actually look inside there and uh, what you uh, uh, you can kind of see that there's this uh, bolt there and uh, if you look a little bit to the left it's it's not it, you can't see it here on the camera but if you um, if you were to look at, at it with your own eye with the uh, light pointing directly at it you will see that it's actually oily uh, inside so, which is exactly why uh, the oil is draining from these cracks here and uh, it ends up uh, basically everywhere. And as you drive, that wind turbulence is kind of pushing it all backwards and it just kind of splatters everywhere. Uh, so, making you think that you have like a leaky transmission and you know, all sorts of issues. But uh, in reality, um, this part, this part of the um, uh, what do you call it? Well, pen is wet because you know it drips down and it drains down as the as the car sits, and it even tends to run uh, along the edges uh, pretty much everywhere. But uh, that's how you basically diagnose this uh, leak. And then uh, we're gonna be removing. Uh, we're gonna be removing this bar here. I believe it only has like three bolts on here, so there's one there, there's one here, and then there's one at the front, right in there. Uh, so that's get, get, that gets dropped. Um, then we're going to be removing the exhaust, so you got one, two, three, four in there. Then the exhaust is uh, suspended by these two uh, frames here whatever they are like crossbars and then there are four more one two three four five six seven eight I'm not exactly sure how many I think there's like one two three and four uh, two uh, suspending things uh, one on each side of the at the end of the exhaust um, yeah so we're gonna be dropping that as well and that's gonna uh, that's gonna let the exhaust uh, go down then we're gonna be removing this bracket um, then we're gonna be removing um, then we're gonna be removing the <coughs> disconnecting the main uh, the drive shaft from the transmission so these um, big black bolts uh, and make sure you have a nut on the other uh, there's a nut on the other end that you want to uh, keep in place as you untighten these, so that needs to get uh, dropped. Uh, it's also get it also gets connected uh, back there, um, underneath, uh, underneath, uh, inside there. You can't really see it, but uh, we'll see it in a moment. Uh, so that gets out of the way, and uh, and then uh, then uh, once we get that out of the way, we will be able to actually pivot the entire engine, which is going to be pulling on that transmission and bringing it down 
so that we can so that we can access uh, all the nuts and bolts um, on, at the top and on the sides. And uh, what I'm going to be what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the transmission down as far as I can, as far as it go, and I'm going to prop I'm going to prop it against the floor with like a wooden piece of wood or something so that it stays so that it stays propped uh, so that way I can have my hands in there and work around it uh, we can remove the uh, brake uh, cylinder here uh, the brake line, there's a couple of uh, bolts in here, there's one here and one at the top um, some wires uh, there's a wire over there, we'll pull that off we're gonna be disconnecting the clutch um, trigger, um, what do you call it, shifter assembly over there somewhere over there at the top, yeah I'll show you that, the mechanism is very simple so and then uh, once we get it all out of the way we will finally start removing um, these Torx screws uh, out of the way and um, yeah that's it and then we're just gonna yank the whole thing out of there and uh, we'll we be removing the fly uh, clutch basket the clutch disc the flywheel um, because it all happens behind the flywheel so that way we can see what's uh, what's leaking in there so hopefully we'll have fun doing that This is the exhaust. There's one here, one there, and one uh, exact same thing on the opposite side. All right there. So that's how you're looking at it. So there's one side and one side there.
there's a ring right behind that locking washer so make sure you don't lose the ring and then this thing just slides out like that and then the one at the, behind it there's actually a lever mechanism so if you can see this little this little section here it actually lifts up like this so I gotta do is I uh, got a flat screwdriver and I just there's actually a space in the back that you can uh, pry it against like this there we go okay finally I got it out so this is basically the mechanism here see that's basically how it locks in so you, and there's a little room here this is where I would insert the screwdriver and just kind of pry it off so that's basically it uh, these things are cheap on eBay you can uh, uh, reorder if you break it so don't worry about it and then it just slides out like this there we go and then this thing is uh, cut so the shifter is now completely disengaged now we can go ahead and uh, start um, you can already see that I can already tilt the engine you know a little bit it already moves up and down so I'm just gonna move it down as much as I can uh, so that I can get the screws that are way back there I can't even see them there so there's some there's some screws in there right there I don't know if you can pick them up but that's basically where I need to go and they're kind of going all over the place all around the transmission so try to suspend this thing um, with the, like a zip tie or something because it's going to get in the way a lot and it's going to get into your faces into your face quite a bit uh, if you don't so just going to do a zip tie trick on there or something so laying down here I would I would basically grab um, I would grab the end of the transmission and just kind of pull it down and as I do the crack uh, the crack here between the transmission between the front front end of the front end of the engine and uh, this um, crossbar at the bottom starts to open up and then I shove in uh, to uh, you can use like two by four or something I got a, two, two, a couple of two by sixes in there they kind of fit perfectly so and the reason why I do this is because once uh, transmission is out of the way the entire engine is gonna wanna uh, it's gonna wanna fall back uh, fall uh, um, forward um, which is gonna screw things up a bit so that's why I'm uh, kinda propping it up uh, against this um, crossbar here so that it doesn't do that and stays exactly where it's at so to get the transmission out you will need, I believe you only have to have two uh, Torx sockets. One's going to be uh, number 10, and the other one's going to be number 14. Alright, so they look like this. So you got 14, and then you got, and then you got 10. I believe these are the only two sizes. So we're going to need a uh, couple of extensions here um, so that you can reach all the bolts and nuts that are uh, on the far back at the very top of the transmission um, you'll probably have like uh, four uh, at the top uh, but we'll have to uh, double check on that later uh, just so you know uh, you don't you, you can probably use like um, an extension that is like this you know longer better and it's solid but I would I would advise you to break your extensions uh, if you can in in half you know so that way there's a uh, flexibility uh, along the way rather than just having this one rigid thing here so Just 
kind of going in there with my hand and trying to find them. And then I guide the gun in there and try to get it out. And sometimes it's very tricky, especially now that the stupid camera is on the way. I think that's it. Well, uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, try to pry it through the inspection uh, hole here. Yep, and it slid. It just slid backwards a little bit, giving me the indication that this thing is uh, ready to get pulled out. Okay, there we go. That was easy. Okay, and just gonna slowly lower it down. Okay, there we go. And crawl myself out. And that's basically all there is. That's basically all there is to get it out. Nothing too complicated. It's just very difficult. That's it. So, um, what I want to do now is I want to get this transmission out of here. So I'm going to be removing, now I'm going to be removing the, the clutch bas basket and the flywheel behind it. Here we want to have um, six millimeter uh, bit for these this guy so I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, work ourselves around it in a tire removal fashion make sure it's inserted all the way before you get it out otherwise uh, you may strip it Double check every time. I hate these stupid. This thing is heavy, so kind of brace yourself a little bit when you're pulling it out. It does not it does not fit the wrong way either. So, um, so let's go ahead and uh, investigate. What the problem is here? I think, I think I have cracks here. You know what I want to do? 
um, after doing some cleanup and uh, closer examination, I uh, um, I confirmed that the crack lines that I saw here are not actually cracks, but they're cast marks. So I can just go ahead and not to worry about this. But I did find a little bit of leak um, over here at the bottom of the at the bottom of this um, housing. So we are uh, gonna have to remove this with a 10 millimeter socket at the bottom. You got four bolts at the bottom. These uh, don't over tighten these. They are only uh, 150 inch pounds or something in that range. About 11 feet pound. About 15, 18 uh, Newton meters, whatever method you prefer. So, just getting these things out. Okay. And there's one more up. And a two point meter that later. Okay. There's a little bit of oil. There's going to be a little bit of oil leaking. So, not a whole lot. But there will be a little bit of a leak. Um, primarily because the engine is tilted. I'm going to go ahead and remove my supports and allow the uh, engine to um, drop so that all that oil is not um, well I, I don't know should I be even it, it's still there you know I probably just go ahead and remove remove the support so that engine goes back to where it belongs Hopefully, it's not going to go down too violent. Okay, there we go. Okay, so the oil is not flowing. That should help the flow. Stop it at least. And continue on getting them screws out. Alright. So now this whole thing should just uh, just pry it out with a flat screwdriver or something. See, just like that. it. That's all there is to it. 
Now we need to look around and see. Why was it wet? I have um, some oil here uh, on this end, um, but then I also have some oil on the outside of the ring, which is uh, not good. So um, we'll uh, take this uh, plate out carefully. I don't want to bend it. It's actually metal. Very thin. Um, do clean up. Clean everything up. I'll remove the old seal, uh, rubber gasket, liquid gasket, whatever you want to call it wipe it down, you know, clean everything mm -hmm. so the only thing I can really do here is I can either buy a new uh, seal this seal is brand new so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just just gonna go ahead and do this uh, you don't need the housing, and this was not cheap actually. I, always, I bought this brand new. It was like a forty-dollar thing, uh, but there are plenty of uh, alternatives on eBay that are much cheaper, and I don't see why I wouldn't buy them instead of buying this. Um, clearly, honestly, I have no idea why I wouldn't. Uh, but you know, I thought you know, I might as well get some money involved into this and you know get it done right. Uh, but apparently, it didn't work. So. Um, this whole thing it just comes out and it does come with a tool uh, that we uh, need to utilize in order to reinsert this thing so I'm just going ahead and uh, clean this up get that stupid ring out of there throw it away and uh, go ahead and buy another one I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall the old one because uh, like I said I had it brand new just uh, uh, just a while ago and uh, for some reasons uh, it was leaking and then I did uh, uh, ask around and um, Basically, what happened was, uh, as I as I have uh, confirmed, when I was removing it. Um, the part was actually not inserted uh, correctly. Uh, it was inserted correctly, sort of, but then it wasn't. Um, it wasn't perfectly um, aligned. It was a little bit crooked. It was a little bit off of the alignment. And uh, when you're dealing with this kind of seal it's actually critical so you, I could either take this to a shop and have them press uh, fit it this thing or, or I can do it by hand uh, but I have to be really really careful um, to get it in uh, perfectly straight the um, uh, one of the thing that you wanna uh, look uh, look for is uh, when you're looking at this edge right here this edge right there you wanna make sure that it doesn't have any does it have any damages on there that you didn't damage it or you know because this is the part that's going to ride against uh, the actual um, output um, uh, end of the crankshaft so we want to make sure that this piece is all nice and uh, smooth um, so I, I can probably make things uh, go in in this uh, part of the uh, engine a little bit easier by using a little bit of a silicon grease, or we can just do um, um, motor uh, oil. I don't have any clean motor oil on me right now, so I'm just gonna apply a very thin coat of silicon grease. And then uh, I want to make sure that the surface is clean. Not a speck of dust. Well, dust is okay, but and, you know, I'm, I'm just looking for like uh, sand or anything I can feel with my finger as I slide <laughs> as I slide over it. And then I can just go ahead and insert it. 
uh, very carefully and uh, once when it, when it starts to get a little tough I can probably go ahead and start inserting it a little bit at a time like this and as I do I want to watch the gaps so I can you know at least uh, have uh, exact same amount all the way around that way it's entering as aligned as it can get and I'm going to work all the way until and as you go in it gets tighter and tighter this is normal that's exactly what you want to have and I want to go until um, probably until um, probably until I get this edge lined up with uh, with the ed with the edge over here, not this edge, but this. Edge. There's another edge right there. Or uh, if I look at from this end, so this is the edge of the seal, and I want to line it up with this edge all the way around. So it's going to give me a very good indication that uh, the thing is inserted properly because that end of the seal is metal, so, and it's going to give me a very nice. Uh, line to see whether or not it's inserted properly so I'm just gonna look look at it and then I can already see I'm a little off so correct the problem continue on almost there just continue on checking this is kinda critical here so you want to be careful a little bit but nothing to stress about okay so as you can see I am almost flush against the two surfaces here this is exactly where where I want to be so okay I probably need to push a little bit here in the back And because this side uh, is is metal, if you if you went too far out, you can just take like a plastic screwdriver and just tap it back in, and it'll be just fine. So I'm just trying to doing final evaluations of whether or not I should call it good, and. Um, I think I'm gonna call it good yeah so I'm just gonna wipe this lip uh, one more time I can uh, either oil it but I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, do uh, um, silicone grease but not on here but I'm gonna do it on the actual uh, end of the crankshaft I just a little bit of gasket over there uh, in the in the corners and the, in the bottom corner over there, you can kind of see that there's a, a black gasket uh, running. You know. So with that with that in place, I uh, went ahead and uh, cleaned. I um, let me focus here and there. Okay, so I went ahead and I cleaned the surface of the this end of the crankshaft. I don't know what it's called, but and I uh, applied a little bit of silicone grease on there, a very very thin layer of it. So and now I'm gonna be uh, uh, reinstalling uh, this part. And um, if you don't have uh, this, the, this uh, seal actually comes with a uh, installation tool, but I throw it away, so I'm gonna have to fiddle this thing around, make sure that this lip it doesn't get uh, folded uh, out this uh, outside it's so you want to make sure that it stays in there 
Um, it's gonna, it might be a bit challenging, but um, nothing to uh, really uh, worry about. Just gonna, you know, play around with it. See if you can start from the bottom, and then kind of see if you can work your uh, work its way up. Um, and I, I bet it's gonna be a little difficult, but you can kind of um, push it with your. Uh, if you have like a nail on your finger, you can kind of work around with your nail in there like this. See, just like that, and it and it gets inserted perfectly, almost. There we go. Yep. That's how you do it, with just uh, with the tip of your nail, and just kind of get it in there. It fits just like that, and uh, do a final check. Okay, and we're just gonna go ahead and uh, reinsert all the nuts and all the bolts and tighten them to one uh, 115 inch pounds and what I'm going to do now I'm going to tighten this these two and as I do it actually moves the entire thing down kind of presses it against the surface and this is probably oh, may also be why it was leaking so uh, because I didn't do it so I'm just going to go one at a time Okay, the ones on, on the uh, the outer ones, they're not really holding the part in place. Uh, they're just holding the um, they're just holding the oil pan, so I should have should have even need to remove them in the first place. But you know they're out, so whatever. Okay, there. So I'm just going to tighten these. Don't want to go too tight. 115 inch pounds is not much of a, not much torque. Okay. Okay, so now we do these. Okay. So it's like bottom down and about like, I don't know, maybe like, I would say maybe 10 degrees, maybe. You know, 10, 15, de 15 degrees, like at most. Oh, wait a minute. 45. No, it's not 10. It's like, it's more like, um, I would say it's more like, uh, more like 20 degrees or something. Yeah. So it's about like 20, 25 degrees once it's all bottomed down. So, yeah. That's going to be your torque specs. Okay, so now this guy, this guy gets about 22 pounds of torque, like that, with one motion, there. Cool, so we can now put the flywheel back on. We want to make sure that it has no oil or dirt on it. So clean that up. Okay. Uh, it's got an alignment pin, so you need to figure out where the hole is. And uh, you can kind of see that it's this guy right there, so a little bit difficult <laughs> okay starter so make sure that you know where your alignment pin is come on there we go okay there we go okay 
Okay. I'll go with them there. Go ahead and uh, torque these two specs. I'm just gonna do them with the with this bad boy. All right, so um, now we need to get that stupid clutch disc in there like this. Uh, when you insert it, um, it's kind of difficult to tell what side um, goes in, what side goes out. But basically, you want the... I don't know, it depends on the brand that you have, but um, you can, if you can look at it from, uh, you know, on the edge like this, uh, on this edge, you can kind of see that one side is shorter, uh, the, the center piece sticks out less than on the other side, and also if you have maybe have anything like little fins here that, you know, that, that, that are bent out, so you want them to be facing out. Um, yeah, that's basically the logic uh, behind the application uh, of this thing. 
and uh, this um, uh, we need to do what we do need to have an alignment uh, tool uh, for this uh, which I happen to uh, not have uh, but I will uh, I will uh, ignore this and I will uh, use um, the universal uh, alignment tool which is a total uh, piece of trash but it is uh, it, it'll be uh, efficient for me uh, to uh, get the job done so um, yeah so right now all I need to do is I just need to find a way to get these holes um, lined up so that I can get this thing in there like that yeah so I'm not gonna tighten this um, maybe just a little bit so I can just so that the basket stays on and doesn't fall on my face you know just a little tiny bit no pressure uh, so that way I can manipulate the uh, clutch disc inside freely because I do need to align it and once I get it aligned then I will need to um, then I will be able to uh, tighten it the uh, rest of the way if you don't get this aligned you're gonna have a lot of problems inserting your transmission piece back in it's just gonna resist and um, if you're strong enough uh, ultimately you will succeed but it's gonna be it's gonna be very challenging for even for a strongest man on the earth and on the planet it's gonna be a bit challenging okay but it is possible though if you jam it in there uh, really hard you will uh, succeed but we're not here to to do this. So it's just you know, um, just so they can move it by hand, and um, you can actually. It doesn't have to be like perfect. You know what I mean? You can just look inside there, and. Um, and you just need to kind of kind of guess that hole in there the far the hole in the far back side over there uh and you just kind of get this thing aligned so that it looks right and um and you're gonna be looking at this ring and this and this ring and just kind of see if, if they kind of center centered just get your head in here you know just kind of get your head in here and just kind of look straight at it and uh, you can basically, um, you know, set it uh, pretty good, actually. Uh, I've done that a number of times, and it, it actually worked. Even though, if, even with the alignment tool, alignment tool tends to drop that thing down just a bit. So even with the alignment tool, I would still be kind of trying to get a straight look at it and lift it up just a little bit. So, um, you know, needless to say just align it with your own with the with the eyesight you know just make sure that you get it that you're looking at it at a uh, at a right angle you know flat right at it um with your face uh right across from it um and then not not on the angle like this but you want to look right at it and then just kind of get the light in there in the center uh and you'll be just fine Tightening these to specs. Again, make sure that your bit gets inside the screw all the way. Or you're gonna strip them.
So if you could just get the bit by itself and insert it there like this. And make sure it's all the way in and then insert your tool. Because I don't want to deal with any squeaking here, we want to lubricate this thing here. Uh, this is uh, going to allow us to insert this part easier. We can uh, lubricate basically everything that we see, everything that is potentially going to be squeaky, you know, where the spring rubs against the metal, we can lubricate that, you know you name it so just so that things kind of go in smooth you know when you're pressing your shift pedal so, so we won't have to hear any other squeaky noises so make sure you do that uh, make sure that you push the starter in um, so that it's not in the way uh, you know just kind of Push it, push it back in there. I'm just gonna, you can kind of see it kind of moves around. So I'm just gonna push it in there, and uh, so that it stays in, uh, in the back there. So that way we don't have any uh, obstacles to go through, uh, and kind of keeping that thing out of the way. We'll we'll then have to uh, wiggle it into the place uh, once um, transmission is in place. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and try to put that training back on. I have a roll of uh, aluminum tape here that uh, I'm just going to tear a piece out. And align that stupid thing back where it belongs on the starter. Starter was in the way, like I said it will. The piece of trash always gets in the way. Okay, so we got that, and um, right in the place where it's aligned on the left side of it, I'm gonna tape it to the engine so like that. Just gonna go a little over. to the side and uh, okay that's it so take two <sighs> uh, man I could never do it from take one Wiggle like a snake here to get closer. Okay. Come on. Go in there. I think I got it. Oh, oh yeah. All right. Okay, there we go. All right. All right. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So you can actually rotate this thing, and then it'll rotate the end of the shaft, allowing it to match the teeth, so that it would uh, get insert it easier. So the training is in. I'm gonna start um, I'm gonna put the things 
back. Just gonna go ahead and uh, tighten everything in, put all the nuts and bolt, uh, put all these uh, screws back where they belong, and basically uh, reverse the process of the removal. And that's it. I hope the leak is uh, permanently fixed. Thank you for watching. God bless. Have a good day. I most certainly will.